Hi, everybody. Mrs. Tavara here, aka Rock and Librarian. And today we're going to continue to talk about award winning books and different awards that books um, can win. And that might help you choose the next book you want to read. On our Bit Emoji classroom here, we see that there's different awards that you might see on the book. We already covered the Caldecott Award, and that was for Best Illustrations by an American illustrator or that, that lives in America. Today, we're going to talk about the Newberry Award. And there's the Coretta Scott King, as well as the Pura Belpre Award. So when we talked about the Caldecott Award, I just wanted to briefly touch upon one Caldecott book that maybe you might be interested in reading. It looks like a novel. So last week we talked about the Caldecott Award and that award was given for best illustrations. And these were some of the awards winning books that were here. And I pointed out specifically <clears throat> some of my favorites. We talked about um, Hello Lighthouse and we read Wolf in the Snow. Do is Tack is one of my favorites. It only won the honorary award. And Trombone Shorty in 2016 also won the honorary award as well as honorary award for Coretta Scott King Award, which we haven't talked about yet, but books can win multiple awards. Before we move on to the Newberry Award, I just wanted to point out one more Caldecott Award winner from 2008. I love this book. It's half done in illustration and half done in text. It's The Invention of Hugo Caparet by Brian Shelsnick in 2008, and this is a book about an orphan clockkeeper and a thief. Hugo lives in the walls of a busy Paris train station where survival depends on secrets and anonymity. When the, his world suddenly interacts, interlocks with the eccentric bookish girl and a bitter old man who runs a toy booth in the station, Hugo's undercover life and his most precious secret are put in jeopardy. A cryptic drawing, a treasured notebook, a stolen key, a mechanical man, and a hidden message from Hugo's dead father form the backbone of this intricate, tender, and spellbinding mystery. Here's the book itself out of um, Cold Harbor's library. And it's in the fiction section, of course, F for fiction, and the first three letters of the author's last name. And look how it's a big book. It's kind of intimidating. But when you open it up, like I said, it won the Caldecott in 2008. When you open it, there's two parts. There's part one and part two. And if you look closely to part one, it's all done. Of course, there's the Eiffel Tower in Paris. All done. The first part is all done in illustrations. And you have to read the pictures to know what is going on. And of course, we keep seeing the story evolved through the pictures. Then this interwoven throughout the book, you will get half of the book will be written in text. So let's see, here we go. So chapter six, there's some text to read. I love this book. This author did a couple of books like this, Brian Snellzek, and it's also a motion picture, so it's a movie. And this won the Caldecott in 2008. You might want to check this out of the school library or the Pamunkey library. So the next medal we're going to talk about is the Newberry Medal. And here's the medal, what it looks like. And the runner up is silver. It is started in 1922 and they continue this award to the present day. And last year underneath the medal, you see the book New Kid. That was the winner from last year. And I'm going to show you that book. It's actually a graphic novel. And underneath that book, you see the undefeated. Now that should look familiar because on the Cal it won the Caldecott in 2020. This, the, the undefeated book actually won three medals. It won the Newberry Honorary Award, the Caldecott Medal, as well as the Coretta Scott King Award. So books can win multiple categories. 
In the next set of books, you see the 2019 winners and the two runner-ups there. And in 2018, you see the winner, Hello Universe. And 2018, you see the honorary books. Today, we're going to talk about Crown and Ode to the Fresh Haircut. And if you look at the book cover, you see that they're act that actually won four medals. The bond one is John Keats medal. We're not going to focus on that medal, but above it is an honorary award winner for the credit cut, Scott King, honorary award for Newberry, and honorary award, award for the Caldecott. So here listed in the middle is the terms and criteria. If you click on the blue link term and criteria, you will get the full details on it. But in summary, number one, the author must be a citizen of the United States. Number two, it can be any form of writing. It can be a piece of fiction or nonfiction or poetry. Number three, you see I put it in quotes, distinguished. That's a word they use in the criteria. And they're saying that the children's literature for ages up to 14 has a strong plot, a good theme, good characters, has good style and setting, and that the book is well organized. Now, when you go to the library catalog and maybe use that search engine there, I'm going to pause for a second, open up the library catalog, follow Destiny Library catalog, and go to your school. And if you type in Newberry, it will show you the books that are currently in the library. Now, because the award, oh, I love this book, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats and Nim published in 1986, so that means it won the award in 87. This might be a good way for you to find your next book. Now, when it says for ages up to 14, not all of these are age appropriate for fourth and fifth graders. So some you may or may not find in the elementary school library, but it might be in the middle school library or of course in the public library. And you can always talk to your mom or dad and see if that's a good fit book for you. Here's the winner from last year, from 2020, New Kid by Jerry Craft. And I linked on here the Goodreads. Remember, that's a good website to go to get a little information, background information about a book to see if it's a good fit. It is a graphic novel about starting over a new school where diversity is low and the struggle to fit in is real. And you see, it's about a seventh grader. So you might want to read about it, even maybe talk to your mom or dad to see if it's age appropriate for you. The reading level, not to give you a peek of it, I downloaded it from the Pomunkey Online Library. It is a graphic novel. So I started to read it and actually it looks really interesting. I'll just read the first page. This is how I feel every single day of my life. Like I'm falling without a parachute. I mean, I'm not really falling. That's called a metaphor. I learned them about them in English. When I was younger, I used to wish I was Superman. So instead of falling, I could fly. Sketchbook. Chapter one, the war of art. But now I realized that I'm 12. I realized just how silly that was. And the story continues. So this might be a book that you want to check out on, off of Overdrive or the Pamunkey Library. Hi, everybody. So I told you that we were going to pick Newberry to read. And I have to obviously pick short ones because we have limited time, right? So this book I picked because it has won four awards. Like I told you, it was only the honorary Newberry but it was also the honorary Caldecott, honorary credit Scott King. And it did win this award called Ezra Jack Keats Book Award. I don't know what the terms and criteria for this award is. So I'm gonna stop and share my screen. So this book can be found at a Cold Harbor Library. And, you know, even if you go to a different school, you can, and they don't have it, if they don't have it, you can have it ponied over to your school. It is in the everyone section with the last three letters of the author. So the author is Derek Barnes, so B-A-R, and it's alphabetical order on the shelf on E-B-A-R. If I go to the title page, of course, it tells me the publisher at the bottom, and I flip over to the verso, and it says what year it was published. 
So in this case, the book was published, there it is, in 2017. So that means it won the honorary award in 2018. They vote in January of the following year. So when you read this, there's a couple of things we can talk about. There is a really good theme that we can talk about at the end. And remember theme is a lesson or moral we can learn from the story. So we can um, talk about that at the end, as well as just a reminder, it's a good way to use these medals in your uh, library search to search out a book you may want to read. So this is crown and ode to the fresh cut, meaning haircut. And I know personally, I love getting a new haircut. And I try to pick a day. I don't know if you're like this, like me. I, I try to pick a day that I know I, I want to go out at night. I'd see a friend, you know, or go out to dinner or be, you know, whomever. And because it makes you feel so good. It makes you feel pretty and fresh, etc. So let's see what happens in this book. Crown, an ode to the fresh haircut, written by Derek Barnes and illustrator Gordon C. James. Remember, Caldecott is about illustrations. Newberry is about the storyline. When it's your turn in the chair, you stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walked through that door. These beautiful illustrations, it looks like it was done in paint. I can tell by the bristles of the brush there. You know, sometimes I forgot to point this out is sometimes they tell you what um, artwork they used. Let me give a quick look and see if they mentioned it. No, they, they do not mention what kind of artwork they use, but you can look at it. It's definitely some sort of painting, maybe acrylic. You came in as a lump of clay, a blank canvas, a slab of marble. But when my man is done with you, they'll want to post you up in a museum. That's my word. He'll drape you like royalty. He'll drape you like royalty with that cape to keep the fine hairs off your neck and your princely robes. It's amazing what a tight fade, high, low ball does for your confidence, Dark Caesar. Who knows? You might just smash that geometry exam tomorrow or and rearrange the entire principles on a roll. A fresh cut does something to your brain, right? It hooks you up hooks up your intellectual. You're a star, a brilliant blazing star, not the kind that you'll find on a sidewalk in Hollywood. Nope. They're going to have to wear shades when they look up and catch your smile. Of course, really feeling good about that haircut. He'll lean you back in the chair, dab that cool shaving cream on your forehead, and then he'll create a flawless line with that razor. Slow, steady, surgical, it frames your swagger. The cute girl in class across the way won't be able to keep her pretty eyes off you. Her friends will giggle and whisper, girl, he's so fun. Yeah, that's what they'll say. <laughs> the whole school will be seasick from the rows and rows of ripples. You'll have more waves on your head than the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to my do-rag and patience. There's a dude to the left of you with a faux hawk, deep part, skin fade. He looks presidential. Maybe he's the CEO of a tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. Due to the radio looks majestic. There are thousands of black angels waiting to guide and protect him. And soon he steps a foot out that door. That's how important he looks.
There's a dude standing in the mirror that can't get over them. Masterful design crafted on the side of his dome. Everywhere he goes, people will ask for his autograph. He looks that fresh. He looks like he owns a few acres of land on Saturn. Maybe there's a river named after him on Mars. He looks that important. There are two dudes, one with locks, the other with cornrows, and a lady with butterscotch complexion. And all they want is a shape up, tapered sides, a trim, and a crisp but subtle line. And sometimes in life, that's all you ever need, a crisp but subtle line. When your brother is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change. When his fingertips hit you with that apple green alcohol or that witch hazel, it'll sting, but not like a scorpion or a hornet, more like an electric stamp of approval. And when you see the cut yourself in that handheld mirror, you'll smile, a really big smile. That's the you that you'll love the most. That's the you that wins everything. That's the gold medal you. Kind of true when you have that kind of confidence and do well. Every person in the shop will rise to their feet and give you a round of applause for being so fly. Not really, but they'll look like they want to. You'll see it in their eyes. I love this page. It's the look your English teacher gives you when she hands you your last test with a bright red 97 slapped on it. It's how your mother looks at you before she calls you beautiful. Flowers are beautiful. Sunrises are beautiful. Being viewed in your mother's eyes as someone that matters, now that's beautiful. And you'll take it. You don't mind at all. Finally, he'll remove your cape and swipe you down with a brush made from a golden horse tail. You'll put the money in the pan without even expecting change back. Tip that man, tip that man. It was worth it. It always is. You know why? Because you'll leave out of the shop every single time feeling exactly the same way. Magnificent, flawless, like royalty. Hello, world. I love this page. You know why? Because we'll leave out of the shop every single time feeling the exact same way. Magnificent, flawless, like royalty. Hello, world. So we just finished reading Crown and Ode to the Fresh Haircut. And here again are the criteria. Of course, it only won the runner-up in 2018, but it also won the runner-up for Caldecott, Best Images, and the Coretta Scott King, and then first place for the Ezra Jack Keats Award. So the author, and you can look him up, Derek Barnes, had to be American citizen. And the type of writing this is, if you haven't guessed yet, it's fiction. It's a fake story, not, not a true story, not nonfiction. It's a fictional story. Distinguished children's literature for ages up to 14 with a strong plot. And it did have a good plot line of this boy going into getting his hair cut and how excited he was while he was in the barbershop. Has theme, characters, style, and setting. And the book was well organized. So I want to talk about the theme. What is the theme, the lesson moral we can take into our own lives of this fiction story? Go ahead, pause the video. Discuss with your elbow partners what you think the theme was. Then share a few out loud. 
and then push play again. Great. Well, I think the theme was self-confidence. I know, like I said in the beginning of the video, that when I go get a haircut, I feel so good after. It just makes me just feel good. Like I like people to see me after. So I'm going to write, and I already wrote it. I'm going to paste it down here. I think it's self-confidence is the theme we can learn from this story. That if we do something for ourselves, it can be something simple like a haircut. That little changes make us feel good and confident in life. So self-confidence. Did you come up with that? So now that you've watched the Newberry lesson, number one, number two is you're going to go to the choice board lower down in this slide deck and pick from that list the next part of the lesson. You could do this as a class or you could do this individually. If you choose to do it individually, here is the tiny URL to get you to the Spitmoji classroom so you can click around on your own with earphones on. It's https slash slash tinyurl.com slash tofaro newberry. On the choice board, slide, you'll see there's four choices and you'll probably have time to do more than one. Number one, search the library catalog for a Newbery book that you would like to read. Read the summary, see if it's a good fit book. Then you can also go to www.goodreads.com, that site I told you about, to see the ratings and reviews to see if that's a good fit book for you. Number two, you could watch a YouTube video on the author, Derek Barnes, to find out what were his favorite Newbery books and what inspired him. Number three, you could choose to watch the illustrator, Gordon James, who won the awards as well, the Caldecott Honor specifically for illustrators. You can see who his influence is. Hint, you might see a little picture on the page here that gives you a clue. Number four, if you slide down in the slide deck to some of Mrs. Tufaro's favorite Newberries, you can look them up in the library cat catalog as well as read them on Goodreads. So it's your time to explore on your own some of these choices. Happy reading.